Thank you. Deborah, thank you very much. Thank you for allowing me to apply my nonsense to your brilliance and to have me... It was an unusual laugh, I would say. <laughs> the gnarled laugh of a man auditioning to be some sort of creepy monster. Uh, it's also quite pirate-like, which is effective in today's modern world. I'm very happy that we have the name Applied Brilliance applied to the back, which is good because it's all one giant word, internet style, which is important, I believe. Um, I'm also very happy to point out that each of these was designed by someone, and I think these people just had a lot of space on their mind. I don't think it's an effective use, quite frankly, of, of the board. And plus, this is so small, you can't read it. I, I know they probably got stuff for free from them, so God bless them for the bags. But <laughs> I see why they, they design bags and, and not, uh, not graphics. Hey. It's just an opinion. I didn't think you were going to be so judgmental. All the judgmental people left already. That's <laughs> what so I thought. I'm going to twist the cap on this brand new Sagamore water, which is, by the way, if you haven't noticed, it's dated. And uh, the date, the expiration, it, it's 8.13.08 is when it was produced. I assume they mean bottled. And it has only a two-year lifespan, which kind of makes me not really want to drink it. What's in water that goes bad? Hmm, I don't think so. The bottle, but that plastic would take a little longer. You'd have to heat it to leach some of the harmful chemicals. That tastes like it's got three years to me. <laughs> uh, when I um, was first told about Applied Brilliance, I thought it was a hair product. But I was happy to find out that it is not. It is an incredible concept which brings to mind which is more important, the brilliance or the application thereof. That is something you must think about, but not for too long, because it is a synergetic manifestation of duality, I suspect. <laughs> Speaking of that kind of duality which bookends upon itself, I find it interesting that the first speaker presented a very uh, Jewish kind of situation. I believe it was uh, Doug, speaking of his rabbi, the first guy, and then we close tonight with pork. So um, <laughs> that to me is, is full cycle. <laughs> and he, he spoke lovingly of his uh, rabbi with his bushy hair and the uh, Dr. Rabbi Hoofman. And um, I, uh, the rabbi, I went to Washington Hebrew Congregation and uh, the rabbi he was a gay man, and his name was Rabbi Seaman. And I swear, I'm not that good of a joke writer. I swear to God. Watch the Hebrew congregation. Google it. If you doubt me, Google it. No pictures, my brother. I'm just kidding. The F stops here. Just remember, focus is suck off backwards. I, uh, Doug also uh, spoke about open source, which is a, a valuable way to share code with people. But for me, it sounds a little bit too much like open source. <laughs> and that's something you don't want to share with people. So I'm going to have a kind of theme tonight that will be manifesting a duality, intersecting, and going kind of tertiary on us but in a unified way, which may seem self-flagellating, but it's <laughs> only if it's enjoyable. Uh, by the way, a sagamore, I believe, is the Greek word for pendulous flesh. <laughs> Applied brilliance is the Greek word for Applied brilliance. <laughs> Greeks had a lot of good stuff going. I'm really confident of that. Um, there were many extraordinary speakers this weekend, but it wasn't really a weekend. It was during the week. However, it was two days, and 
days are kind of arbitrary. You can't look outside and know what day it is. So how do you know this isn't Sunday? <laughs> Just because the paper's not thick. <laughs> and how can they have the Sunday paper on Saturday? Isn't that insulting to every other day? And it's, oh, you can have it on Saturday. Well, why can't we get the Tuesday paper on Monday? Oh, there's no colored c cartoons. <laughs> Makes no sense at all. But that is part of the redundancy, the abundance of redundance. Tom, a brilliant writer, spoke uh, of historical events and, and said that history does not repeat itself. However, I think there are aspects which seem rather, rather cyclical to me. Uh, the calendar, seems to be some repetition going on there. <laughs> is that just me? What's this date? What are we, uh, this, what's the year, though? Oh, that's cycling as well. Uh, the calendar, as you know, has evolved many times. Uh, the President Gregorian, uh, in the time of Caesar, there were only 10 months. And uh, December was the 10th month. Dec, December, Sept, Op, Nav, Dec, 7, 8, 9, 10. But because uh, the year of the real sun wasn't matching up to the Earth year, the winter holidays are moving towards the summer, so Caesar had the wisdom to add two months. Being slightly egomaniacal, he named them after himself, Julius Augustus Caesar, July and August. Yeah. Truth is not funny, but it should be. <laughs> if Snoop Doggy Dog had been emperor, we may have uh, Snooptober and Doggist. Which is another aspect of that. Uh, time has a, a cyclical flavor to it. There are 86,400 seconds in a day. And I conceived a project once to have a room with 86,400 clocks in it. Each clock would be tuned to one of the seconds of the day. So in this room, it would be all the time, all the time. Coincidentally enough, 86,400 is one-tenth the diameter of the sun in miles. Once again, truth. <laughs> Not as funny as it should be, but maybe you'll think of it later. And the sun and the moon, same size in the sky, but obviously not the same because one is 400 times bigger, 400 times further away, but that seems nicely planned. Maybe it's just my wishful thinking. Just uh, parenthetically and palindromically, uh, in uh, the Torah, Abraham and Sarah had their names changed before they could have uh, their own, uh, before after Hagar, which is the beginning of the Middle East problem, obviously. And uh, their names were changed numerically to palindromes, the same backwards and forwards, which is interesting because uh, male DNA has a little bit of palindromic information in it. And the number 1001 is a palindrome, very valuable. And 7 times 11 times 13, factoring three consecutive primes, equals 1001. And Buckminster Fuller thinks that that's why 13 is unlucky, because the ancient cats who had mathematical knowledge, which allowed them to circumnavigate the globe, didn't want common people to know about 13, so they outlawed its use. And they couldn't use it. So today you have uh, a hotel which is, goes 12 to 14. It's like, well, where's the 13th floor? Oh, it's, it's not there. Yes, it is. You just named it 14. Would you let your daughter go out with the devil? No. What if his name was Bob? I'd be all right. <laughs> I'm not Bob and me, all right. I'd let him come. Greg uh, spoke rather eloquently about his desire to find some pharmaceutical that would allow him to feel euphoric at all times. <laughs> I don't see him here, so perhaps he found the number to call. <laughs> he was also very active in his description of people pursuing sweets and sex as though they are the same concept to pursue. And I would suggest that one who would pursue sweets all the time would be more than likely fat. And one who had sex all the time would be lucky. 
I would see that as a difference. Not to say that an obese person could not be lucky and eat sweets and have sex all day too, but it would be less likely, I would think. More than likely. Um, and JT, I, I think JT's here. Do I see JT there? Yeah. He was very impressive. This man has done, he has more jobs than most people ever even know exist, which is um, pretty remarkable. And I, uh, I uh, googled the clip you did of uh, Lucille Ball and George Burns. I spoke to the George Burns estate and that they're a little upset that you didn't call him and ask him for permission. That he's no longer alive, but it's neither crazy. Until you use the clip without permission, I'm going to sue you. Uh, I wanted to have a list of words that everybody could pick a couple out and just have them be horrible words. <laughs> just all the horrible words that are and just pick them out and say, who didn't pick disgusting? <laughs> what are you afraid of? Find your inner monster and embrace it. No, do not fear that thing that you cannot know. Fortunately, Susan isn't here. She's reading a book that she's going to read for a presentation. I had many disputes with her, her ideology. Uh, she was saying, you know, computers don't make you smart. And there was even an article in the paper today using computers. Uh, it, it, the multitasking going into this other world, it does create new synapses in our brain. And computers don't make you smart, but do books make you smart? Well, you have to read them. It's kind of the same thing, you know. I got plenty of books, but I don't feel any smarter. I ain't read them yet, but, you know. <laughs> One page at a time. She also was um, kind of uh, almost Luddite-like in her uh, fear of, of cyber activities and, and claiming about these uh, young men who spend all their time playing video games as opposed to uh, having sex. Like, maybe she hasn't seen these guys, but I don't think there's a lot of choice involved. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't think it's like, well, what do you want to do, Tom? Well, we could either play Dune 5 or go out with Miss October. <laughs> nah, I'm going to go for the mouse. There were um, a lot of... Uh, really amazing scientists uh, that I was extremely impressed with. Um, my uh, friend, uh, Dr. Curtis, with the rats completely blew my mind because seeing that hexagonal array picked up by rats, and I immediately you know, saw the Star of David and thought, wow, rats are Jewish? Jewish rats, I can't even believe it. This means the mice are goyim. Mickey Mouse, it makes sense. The rats, Ratzenberg, don't you see? It's all some kind of conspiratorial, anti-Semitic statement. But now we got the rats on our team. But I'm trying to be open up and in my pursuit of the truth. Because truth is, truth is what we're looking for. Numbers are the really only truth because they come with that agenda. I'm amused by the legal aspects of truth because they say, uh, is that the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Now, my understanding of truth, it doesn't need further modification. Truth is truth. The whole truth. Is that true what you told us? Yeah. Yeah, well, I told you. Well, yeah, that was true. Is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Oh, no, it's not that. <laughs> but it's true. I want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Tell you what, I'm going to give you the truth, half the truth, almost all the truth, plus, so help me, Elvis. How's that? Is that good? Maybe not. Maybe that's not exactly what you had in mind. If Jim Morrison drove his van to Van Morrison's gym, Would Don Johnson use the John in Van Johnson's van? <laughs> you don't have to answer. 
How much longer can New Zealand be new? <laughs> when Sting gets old, will he change his name to Stung? <laughs> if the Antichrist came to your house for dinner, would you serve him antipasta? <laughs> if you kidnap the receptionist from our radio station. Will that affect the station's reception? <laughs> if Quasimodo had a greasy avocado, would he be a quasi-queasy Quasimodo? <laughs> mm, not sure about that one. Don Johnson, Van Johnson, Vincent Van Gogh playing cards, Don Johnson leaves the room. Well, Van Gogh? <laughs> Just testing. What about Richard, my friend, the, the dolphin maestro? Is he here? Oh, good. How'd you like the pork? <laughs> hey, if you can't find a dolphin... <laughs> I uh, admire what you do because I think any communication to other advanced mammals is important. And you probably read Douglas Adams' books, right? You don't have to answer. It's okay. Uh, but so long and thanks for the fish and dolphins. But when, when you were talking about how much fun it is to watch them and stuff, there's a little look in your eye that frightened me. <laughs> I'm not saying what you're doing is morally right or wrong. It's not my position to judge. Um, Mark, I found to be extremely brilliant. I think I see him, but maybe it could be a reflection. He was just uh, really funny and super intelligent. And I'll tell you something, man, that where I was sitting, when you were talking about the slippery rocks and the rod in your hand, men and women at my table were getting excited. <laughs> it was literary on many levels. And it was, uh, it was good for more than those who wish to know. You know, talk about design, design genius, indication of God's design genius. You are all sitting down now. This is possible because of the crack in your ass. I mean, I'm not trying to scare you or anything, but be aware the ass assimilates and associates to the seat upon which it sits. It would be painfully impossible for you to sit as you are now without that particular crack there. It's genius. <laughs> if your ass was not cracked, you, we would walk like this. <laughs> I'm going to be late. God, please crack my ass. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Go to the gym, get some ringtones. Check out my space face place book. Bob <laughs> Uh, by the way, I do want to point out as far as logos go, the Mohawk logo, and I have a device here which measures it, golden ratio, boom, nails it. Nice work, Mohawk people. Somebody's thinking that's all I can say about those cats. Not everybody takes the time to do that kind of situation, but I'm very pleased uh, that they have in, indeed uh, done that particularity. I um, would like to present now uh, an opera that I've been working on. <laughs> this is an opera about a, a dolphin <laughs> and a Jewish rat that befriends him. to go to Lake Placid said the dolphin to the rat I'd like to go there but I don't know where it's at so they went to Lake Placid and the rat was quite flaccid he said this might be rhetorical, but I think I need an oracle that would help me, yes, 
Instead of going to the Oracle at Delphi, they go to the Oracle at Gateway Beta. Not as effective, but it's powerful theater. Once they reach the Oracle, they meet a rooster. who tells them how to say cock-a-doodle-doo. <laughs> Dolphin and the Jewish rat and the cock-a-doodle-doo They all stayed in Lake Placid where they're looking for something to do. Every day, it's what you need to do, you'll see. But you gotta know yourself before you're gonna know who you're gonna be. Apply some brilliance regularly. Brilliance is not that bright. If you really wanna be effective, then make sure you're brilliant at night. Shine your light at night Cause the spark can be seen far away In the dark they'll know the spark Is always here to stay Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you very much. God bless you, and thank you, Dunbar, for having me. And I wish you all many, many years of applying your brilliance. God bless.